Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. But we're only going to pay it uh, for six months because only six months have passed and interest is similar to rent basically on a house. We're renting the money for six months in this case. So we got to divide that by two or we can think of the ratio. We could divide it by 12 months divided by 12 would mean that would be the monthly amount times uh, six months that have passed and that would be the seven two. So half a year, we could have just divided it by two as well. I'm gonna do that in this calculation. I'm gonna do the same calculation here. I'm gonna put a negative so that we have a negative number in here. We're gonna put 240,000 uh, times 0.06. And this time I'm just gonna divide it by two instead of doing the ratio of six twelves, one half divided by two. And we should come up with that same uh, 7,200. Now the next thing that we need to do as we uh, post this is decrease the discount. Remember, we were going to decrease that on a straight line method over the life of the loan. So let's do a little worksheet over here and see what that might look like. So if we have uh, the loan went on the books at 1-1, one, one, I'm just going to start that off in our worksheet over here. And I'm going to put the carry in amounts of the loan, uh, the unamortized discount, which is the, I'll just say equals this number here that's the disc that's the unamortized discount amount that we have on the loan the carrying amount then of the loan equals the face amount and remember we put that on the, for 240,000 minus the unamortized discount so this is the face amount of the loan minus the unamortized discount carrying amount of 198,484 that's this minus this one 198,484 now We'll calculate the interest as of 630. Now, sometimes it's going to be easier to actually use a calculator in some ways because we'll have sub calculations when we do that. Let me show you what I mean on this. If we pull out the calculator, we're going to say that if we calculate the interest on this, we've got the discount of 41516 divided by, I'm going to divide it by the number of years. We said that uh, we're going to have this for 15 years. So divided by 15. That means that we're gonna have, it's not an even number, of course, but the 2767 uh, seven per year. However, we pay the interest semi-annually uh, or twice a year. So we could take that number and then divide it by two, and that would give us the 1383. You can also think about it this way. We could take the total amount, 41516, and divide it by 15 years, but then we pay twice a year. So if we double that divided by 30 years, divided by 30, and that will give that should give us the same amount here. So I'm gonna do that same calculation in this cell. In M4, we're gonna take the, uh, this amount here, the discount amount, 41,516. I'm gonna divide by the number of years, 15. Then I'm gonna divide that again by two because uh, we have uh, semi-annual payments. So there we have it here. And again, that's a, that's a rounded number. So if I went to uh, the home tab, we went to the numbers group and we increased the decimals. You can see that it's not an exact number here. It doesn't even round to pennies, but I'm gonna keep the number. And when we use that number, Excel is gonna actually use the unrounded number there. It's gonna use the ratio. And so keep that in mind. If you see things that are off by a couple dollars or some pennies, it's probably because there's some type of rounding in our formulas that are being used. Usually we're okay with that, but sometimes it can cause some confusion. So now what's gonna to happen to our unamortized discount, it's gonna go down by this amount. So we're gonna say this equals the 41 minus the 1384, enter, brings it down to here. What's gonna to happen to our carrying amount now? The carrying amount now is gonna equal the 240,000 minus this amount here, the 40,132 and enter. So at the end of the day, the carrying amount on our trial balance, which is gonna be this and this, 
should be 199.868. It's current 198.44 after we post this transaction. So we're gonna basically reduce the discount uh, by the 1384, and that means that this has a um, debit balance. We need to make it go down. Therefore, we're gonna credit it. So I'm gonna copy this account going to put it in cell C9, right click and paste it one, two, three. So in this discounted number, I'm going to take the negative of this number over here. I'm going to take the negative of that number and note that by doing so, instead of just typing in a negative one, three, four, eight, four, I've taken a number that is um, not rounded. If I go here, if I go to the home tab, I go to the number group, I can see it's really 1389. So just keep that in mind that there could be rounding issues as we as we go through this. So here's the credits that are going to happen. Now we're going to need a debit uh, for that amount. What's going to be the debit? It's going to be bond interest expense. So we're going to record the interest expense. Now it makes sense for us to record the interest expense, of course, for the amount of it we're paying for interest. However, uh, it may be a little bit more confusing to see that we are also recording interest expense for amounts we're not paying at this time because what we're doing is amortizing the discount over this time period. Also note that the amount of the bond payable, the principal amount, is not going down at all because we're not paying off any of the principal. We will not pay that off until the end of the bond at uh, 15 years. All right, so the interest expense, ex this is an expense. All expenses have debit balances. They generally only go up. Therefore, we're gonna debit the interest expense. So I'm gonna copy that. Gonna put that on top in C7, right click and paste one, two, three. So if we highlight these, we know that the interest expense is going to have to be this 8584 on the taskbar. I'm gonna do that with our sum plug formula, which is a negative SUM of, and again, you can move this if you want. You can also put your cursor on the bottom and highlight these four cells and enter. And then if we, we see the uh, these two numbers add up to 85, 484 and if we highlight all four numbers it adds up to zero we are in balance and can post it out so i'm going to post this one first so here's the bond interest expense we're going to scroll down over here to i12 which is where the bond interest expense is here equals and point to this 8584 when we hit enter it's going to go up in the debit direction bring net income down so of course we are recording the expense bringing net income down in this case, which is revenue minus expenses. Then we're gonna record the cash. Here's the cash, here's the cash here. We're, we're gonna record it into the adjustment. There's something in here, so I'm gonna double click on it, go to the end of it and plus, and then point to that 7-2. This is a credit, that's a debit. Those are opposite, making this go down. Then we're gonna po post the discount on bond payable. Here it is here, discount over here, and we are gonna post it to I7. So I'm gonna double click on I7. We'll go to the end of I7 and hit plus and point to this 1384. That's a credit, this is a debit. It's gonna make the discount go down. So now we note that the discount now matches our table over here. And if we highlight the credit of the bond minus the debit of the discount on the bond, that comes out to this 199868 which matches our table on this side here for the carrying amount of bond. All right, so we're gonna do this one more time. So we're gonna say over here on 1231, we're gonna record bond interest and straight line amortization. It's gonna basically be the exact same journal entry. We're just gonna do this one more time and record the interest payment on the bond. So uh, what's gonna happen is cash affected. Yeah, we're gonna record interest payment on the bond. So cash will be affected cash has a debit balance we're gonna pay it out therefore it's gonna go down and we're gonna to have to do the opposite thing to it as what it is to make it go down and it's a debit therefore we'll credit it so I'm gonna copy the cash I'm gonna put that on the bottom here's the date gonna put it down here right click and paste one two three and the cash will go down by let's pull out the calculator one more time and calculate it out it will be the 240 face amount face amount has not changed Notice the face amount did not go down, unlike a mortgage, which goes down, principal goes down uh, each month. This one does not, therefore the amount of interest we pay will remain the same. So it will be the 240 times, and just remember it's the amount on the bond, not the market rate. So times 0.06, and that'll give us the 14.4 if it was for a year. However, we're paying it for six months, so we could think about it a couple ways. We could divide by two. Uh, we could break it down and divide by 12, 
we've given us a monthly total of 1002 times six months have passed and that will give us the 7002. I'm going to do that same calculation or similar calculation here. I'm going to put a negative to make it a credit and we're going to put in the amount of 240 the face amount of the bond. We're going to multiply it that times the rate on the bond of 0.06 and this time I'm going to just divide it by two for half a year. Six months, half a year, semi-annually divided by two and we should come out with that same 7,200. Now remember that the other thing that's kind of funny is we're going to have to reduce the discount on the bond as we record the payments and we're just going to do that straight line amortization. So we're going to go back over here and we'll take a look at our table on 1231 we're gonna do the same thing. It's gonna be the same type of calculation here, meaning that we're gonna take, we can do it with a calculator again first. We're gonna take the carrying amount, the 41,516. We're gonna divide that by the number of years, 15, and that would be how much per year, but we, we're amortizing semi-annually, so we could divide by two, and that would give us the semi-annual number, which is this number here, although of course this is rounded. Some people would like to think about it this way. If we took the 41,516 divided by, there's 15 years, but it's semi-annual, therefore there's 30 time periods divided by 30, we would come up with that same number. So I, I'm gonna just take this same number. I'm gonna say this equals this same number here, and it's gonna be uh, using that same number to reduce the amount on the bond discount. And then this is the uh, unamortized discount. We're gonna amortize, we're gonna reduce it by the amortized amount. So we're gonna say this equals the uh, 40,132 from last time minus the next uh, 1384 means it's gonna go down to 38,748. That's what this number will be after we post this transaction. Therefore, the carrying amount will then be the amount on the face value of the bond, 240 thousand minus the unamortized discount 38,748 uh, 38, will bring us down to 201,252. So that means that we're going to have to reduce the discount on the bond by this 1384. This is a debit. We need to make it go down. So we're going to do the opposite thing to it, which in this case is a credit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to right click copy the discount on the bond. I'm going to put it on the bottom in cell C13. Right click and paste. One, two, three. And we're going to put the amount there. I'm just going to do it this way. I'm going to say negative of this number and enter. And note what that does is it is it puts a number that is uh, rounded. So if I go here and I go to the numbers group and I increase decimals, it's really this number. So just keep that in mind. If you hard code it in there, it's um, going to be a little bit different by pennies. So then we are going to post the other side of it. And why are we paying the cash? Because we're paying off the rent kind of on the use of the money called interest expense. And so we're gonna to go to the bond interest expense. It is an expense. Expenses have debit balances. We need to make it go up. Therefore, we're gonna do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm gonna copy the expense on the bond. We're gonna put this over here in C14, right click and paste one, two, three. And how much is going to go there? It's going to be the amount we paid plus the amount of the discount that we're amortizing. That's uh, eight, uh, five, eight, four. And I'm going to do that with our plug formula. So I'm going to put negative SUM of. I'm going to move this out of the way. Or you could go from the bottom up. And that'll give us our, our number there. If we highlight the four cells, it adds up to zero, meaning we are in balance and we can post this out. Note that the journal entry is exactly the same. Under a straight line amortization method, it'll be the same because the carrying amount does not go down, unlike a home mortgage. That's why the interest changes on a home mortgage because we're paying off part of the principal. We're not paying off part of the principal here and we are amortizing the discount evenly. Therefore, basically all the interest uh, journal entries will pretty much be the same in this type of format. So we're gonna post the bond interest expense. So here's the bond interest expense. Here it is, there's something in it. We're gonna double click on it, go to the end of it, and plus, point to the 8584. That's a debit, this is a debit. It's gonna make the debits go up, put us out of balance, bring net income down. So inter the expense is going up, bringing net income down. Then we're gonna post the cash. Here's the cash here. Here's the cash here. Here's where we're gonna post it. Double click on the cash, go to the end of it, and plus, and then point to that 72. That will bring the cash down. 
that's what we're paying out and then we're going to post the de decrease in the discount on the bond here it is here here it is here there's something in it so we're going to double click on i7 go to the end of it and plus this is a credit it was a debit we're going to make it go down and it goes down to that 38748 matching our table here if we take a look at the uh, bond payable it's still on the books at the face amount it's not going down the carrying amount is not going down but the discount is therefore um, if we highlight both of them the debit I mean the credit minus the debit means we have a carrying amount of 201252 which matches our table here now if we do this of course over the 15 years over the 30 time periods then this will go down to zero the carrying amount will then just be the amount of the bond at 240 after 15 years we will then have to pay that 240 reducing the bond paying off basically the loan, the bond that we have out. Mm -hmm.